Three, two, one, let's go! Hi everybody and welcome to another exciting edition of Boring JavaScript. I'm your host, The Virtuoid, aka Mike Smith, and today we're going to be talking about the if statement. Now, if is fundamental to every single computer language out there. It may not be known as the word if, but every single computer language needs the ability to test an expression. And if that expression is truthful, then your program needs to branch one way. If that expression is falseful, if that's an old English word, but actually works here, then your program needs to branch another way. And that's all an if statement does. It determines whether your program will go one way or another. Want to see how it works in JavaScript? Of course you do. Well then let's get started. So what does JavaScript's if statement looks like? Well here it is. Basically consists of three parts. The first part is the if statement itself. That's obvious. The second part is the expression to be tested. And the third part is the code to be executed if that tested expression ends up to be a truthy value. And now I'll get to truthy and the opposite falsy values a little bit later on in the video. So let's take a look at what the expression part does first. The expression itself normally will take some variable and compare that to another variable. Now I'm not going to go into all the different comparisons like not equals, triple equals, double equals, and all that. that. You can look that one up. But the idea here is that you need to be able to have some sort of expression that will eventually get to what we call a truthy or falsy value. Now within JavaScript, you don't have to have a construct like this. You could have a single variable all by itself, should you wish. And I'll show you that here a little bit later on when we do the truthy falsy section of this video. The code that is within curly Q brackets here is executed if the expression comes out to be truthy. So if my animal comes out to be equal, equal, equal to cat, then I should expect console.log to be executed. If it does not equal to cat, then I expect absolutely nothing to happen. So what I have here is I have an array of animals and I am using the math random and math floor to generate a number between zero and the length of that array minus one. And then I'm using the little index into animals to get my animal. So once this line five executes, my animal should be cat or horse or roadrunner or dolphin or whatever. Then I'm using my if to make a comparison. If my animal equals 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 cat, which is the first one on there, then I'm going to say my animal is a cat. If it doesn't equal cat, then I expect nothing to happen. Want to see how it runs? Of course you do. Well, let's check it out. Let's go over to node and let's type in node if and nothing happened that would tell me since nothing happened that the animal that was randomly generated was not cat so let's try it again and let's try it again let's try it again there we go yeah my animal is a cat so i know on that fourth time through there that the random animal that was generated was a cat and how do i know that because in my code i have if my animal is equal to cat then execute the console.log. If it wasn't equal to cat, then nothing happens. Now that's the basics of if. There, there really is nothing more to it. But I want to kind of expand on it a little bit. So the code here, let's flip back, let's flip back to the code. The code itself says that within this curly Q bracket, execute this ticker code if the value is truthy. If the value is falsy, do nothing. But what if you want to do something if the value is falsy? Well, that's the second part of the a if statement and it's called the else and it complements the if and it looks just like this else console.log and let's do this I am not a cat I am a my animal exclamation mark there we go. Okay, so what we're doing here now is we've added the else statement. Now the else is kind of a, uh, a complement to if. And what that does is that if you use the else, it always must have an if to begin with. And it basically says, okay, if this expression comes out to be falsy, then execute all of this inside here. So again, if it's truthy, execute the first block with the if. If it is falsy, execute the block 
for the else. Real simple. You want to see how it works? Of course you do. Let's flip back over to Node. Let's clear our screen. And now we should actually get a message that will come out into the screen if we don't get a cat. So let's try if. Oh, yep, I am not a cat, I am a roadrunner. I'm not a cat, I'm a horse. I'm a whale. I'm a dog. I'm still a horse. I'm still a cow. I'm still a horse. I'm a dolphin. There we go. My animal is a cat. So that's how the if and else statement works. So again, if the curly within, let's get back to the code here. Within the curly queue brackets of the if statement, that gets executed if the expression is truthy. Within the else, that gets executed if the statement is falsy. And that's the very basics for the if and the else statement. Next, let's take a look at a slightly different version of the else called the else if. So the if block is executed if the expression is truthful. The else block is executed if the expression is falseful. But did you know that you can combine a bunch of if statements together? And that's by using the else if. Really easy to use, and here it is right here. Basically what happens is that once an else is executed, which again, remember an else is executed if the preceding if ends up being falsy, it will immediately execute another if statement. So in this particular case, I'm going to execute if my animal is equal to cat, then I'll do something. Else, if it's not equal to cat, then I'm going to test to see if it's equal to dog. Else, if it's not equal to dog, I'm going to test to see if it equals the horse. Finally, else, this is the catch-all. This, this is what's going to happen if it's neither one of the cat, the dog, or the horse. So the S, else if allows you to stack, for lack of a better term, or execute in sequential order a bunch of if statements if an else has been executed from the previous if. So if my cat, if my animal is not a cat, it will go here. If it is not a dog, it will go here. If it's not a horse, it will go here. We'll see how it works. Of course you do. Let's take a look. Let's go over to Node and type in node else if. Ah, the first time through, my animal's a horse. So that means that it, it got falsy on the first if. It got falsy on the second or the else if, the first else if. But it got truthful on the second else if. There, it went all the way through. Went all the way through again. All the way through again, all the way through again. I'm trying to get another cat or dog or horse all the way through again. Ah, there we go. Now my animal is a dog. So you can use the, let's get back to code here. You can use the else if here to chain a bunch of different conditions within this one grouping, if you like a better term, of an if statement. And this allows you to better organize your code. So next we're going to take a look at that truthy, falsy thing I promised I was going to take a look at earlier. So let's talk about truthy and falsy for a minute. Now, you're familiar with Boolean data types. The Boolean data type can either be true or false, and there's, there's no way around it. So if you had a Boolean variable or a Boolean value with an if expression, Boolean true will always do the if, Boolean false will always do the else. But within JavaScript, and this is kind of unique to JavaScript, it has the concept of truthy and falsy. And what that means is that certain variables will evaluate to a true value or evaluate to a false value. For example, if you have a variable that is undefined, that is considered a falsy value, and that will evaluate to a basically a false, and then that will fall under the else part. A null variable or a variable set to null will also be considered a falsy value, and so that will be evaluated within the else. Now, what gets interesting here is numbers and strings. A blank string is considered a falsy value. Basically, it's a string that has no content, so it's considered falsy. So if you're to make a comparison to a, a variable for a string and you compare it and you're looking at just the string itself and it happens to be a blank string, that is considered a false value and it will go under the else. Everything else would be considered a true value and it will go under the if. For numbers, the number zero is considered a false value. It evaluates to falsy, so that will fall under the else. All the other numbers will fall in underneath the true statement or the if. So you got to be kind of careful when you're working with JavaScript to that when you're making your comparisons, you need to not get into the falsy truthy trap. And I'm going to show you here real quick example of how you can't with using the numbers and how you can fall into that trap. So let's take a look at that example. 
Okay, first of all, before I go on here, don't code like this. Again, this is just for an example to show you some of the traps you can get into by doing truthy or falsy. So what I have done here is I've taken my old example, my first example, and I've kind of done some changes to it. Instead of returning the animal itself up here in the animals, I'm now returning what we call the animal index. The same procedures, you know, doing the math random animal's length, doing the math floor, now giving them between zero and the length of the, at the, the array minus one. And then I'm doing a test on if my animal index. Now notice I didn't say my animal index equals equals zero or anything like that. I just said my animal index. So what I'm evaluating here as the expression is a single variable. So what JavaScript will do here is it will determine the truthy or falsy value of the variable. Now, this is going to return a number, a number between zero and one, two, th zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, zero, and then eight. I'm going to test my index. It's going to evaluate it. Did that number be, be, either be truthy or falsy? And it's either going to say my animal is a cat or my animal is not a cat. Now, the problem here is, is that the number zero will always evaluate to a falsy value for numbers. So if my animal index comes up to be zero, which will be cat in this case, it's actually going to execute my animal is not a cat, it's a cat, because zero evaluates to a falsy value. All the other numbers, one through eight, evaluate to truthy values. So if my animal index comes up to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, it's going to say my animal is a cat. So obviously, really, really bad coding here. But this kind of shows you the traps you get into. So let's take a look at the code and see how that works. So let's go node truthy. And my animal is a cat. Well, we know it isn't because we know that the number was either one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, and those will evaluate to a truthy value. And since it's evaluated truthy, it evaluates the if block. Let's try this again. And we'll still a cat. Up oh, there we go. My animal's not a cat, it's a cat, which basically means I did return a number zero there, but since zero returned as a falsy, then it executed the else. So how do we fix it? Well, we fix it by just instead of evaluating the variable itself, we, we go ahead and say if it equals 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 zero. That will fix the problem because then that will turn into a Boolean true or Boolean false, and there's no doubt whatsoever about that happening. So if we flip back over to our code, let's clear off our screen. Uh, yep, cat's not a lizard. Now, see, now it's working exactly the way we expected it to work. And eventually, I should get a cat. Eventually, I'll get a cat. There's a one. There we go. My animal is a cat. So that's one of the things that you can get into trouble with by using truthy and falsy values. It is always pretty much a pretty good idea to be able to use the triple equal sign to be able to make a comparison for your variables to make sure that you're getting exactly what you want. Now, there are some instances where if you know a function returns a null or an undefined, or return something else, then you can very easily use the my in animal index. Uh, a, a very good example here is the query selector method on some of the DOMs within the JavaScript on a browser. If it return the, the query selector will either return the HTML element or return null. Well, the HTML element will always be a truthy value since pretty much objects are pretty much always truthy values. Null will always be a falsy value. So in this case, you could just put the variable right there and be okay. But I just kind of wanted to show you that, that you need to be careful about doing it by doing just single variables there that you don't get put into the truthy falsy trap when you're dealing with strings and numbers. And that's all there is to using the if statement in JavaScript. I hope you enjoyed our video. Hope I didn't bore you to death. Please visit us at www.boringjavascript.com for all of our videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or see everything we have at blog.thevirtualoid.com. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you later.